Like the video or I'll declare war on your waifu. I will beat the shit out of her. I will clobber that bitch. I will mangle her face till it is unrecognizable. I will dismantle her oppressive army board by board. Then I'm gonna give her a smooch on the cheek. Part 1. White Clouds. Lone Moon. To War. Guys, today's map is a lot of fun. The goal is to knock out this dumb bitch again while defending the capture point. Your units are lined up and spread out along the wall, while there are three lanes of enemies slowly approaching and you need to divide your units to properly deal with the varying threats. The flying demonic beasts at the left are fast, with an AS of 38. They are faster than any of your units could theoretically be, unless you did some grinding and finagling with Petra or Felix or Catherine or someone of the like. So I thought sending in a fortress knight like Raphael would be a good idea, and it was. His high defense stat mixed with their just okay attack stat allowed him to stall the beasts while the rest of the map could be taken care of and eventually he could be reinforced. The right side had a lot of armored knights and some cavaliers, mostly high defense units, so I chose magic users to blow right through them. The middle was probably the biggest scramble with fast falcon knights and strong warriors, so snipers to outrange and fuck up the flying units along with sword based dodge tanks to avoid the big damage was pretty much my go-to play. What I'm trying to say is that the map drove home the importance of having diverse character classes. They made sure everyone on the team had a role to fill by presenting such a wide variety of threats. This is the first game in a while that made it feel like it was worth having an armored knight on the team, or an archer. Splitting up the teams into three parts exemplified that point by literally sending them off to solve the problems that they are best suited for. I think this is the strongest part of the map and it kind of works as a transition from the school phase to the war phase. The earlier maps have been a little weaker due to how limited the students were, thus limiting the complexity of the challenge you would be able to solve. But now that they've grown into their classes a lot more, the gloves are coming off and the real battles are just starting. At least that's how I see it. There's a lot of other good stuff here too though. These ballistas were a fun obstacle to dance around. They took up a large portion of the map and they were far away, behind some walls. They were defended by other ballistas and pegasus knights. Getting in there was hard enough, let alone getting your unit out once they took out the guy running the ballista. It felt like a chess puzzle and I really enjoyed that. Guys, the green units were actually competent. God, I, I know, I, I know, I, I swear to Sothis though, some of them just would not die. They had the maddening stat buffs, they were strong, they were useful, they were good distractions for the ballistas. I used my healers to make sure that they could keep fighting, and I was glad when I got more of them from capturing the side objectives. I could not believe what I was seeing. It was cool that there was boss-esque units sprinkled in with the common ones, even if the Death Knight got lysithia for the fifth or sixth time at this point. And I never felt like I could safely take out all of the amassed units in the center of the map. When Edelgard started advancing, I knew it was time to teleport in and take her out to end the chapter immediately. The layout of the map I feel wasn't really used to its full potential, mostly the bottom part with all the towns and the forest and whatnot, they pretty much just went unused. But I also know the Crimson Flower route has us go bottom up, so I can forgive it for being designed for two different experiences. It's a beautiful map, and what I feel marks the transition to what is hopefully some of the better maps in the game. 9 out of 10.